I'm going to read an excerpt from Wayne Simmons's new novel, Flu. This little segment is about George and Norman. They're two police officers responding to a call in an apartment complex, and uh, there's crowds of people around. They're wearing um, gas masks and biohazard type gear, and they've just fought their way up a set of uh, a whole bunch of stairs to get up to this apartment where somebody has the flu. <clears throat> the people huddled around the doorway, mostly relatives of Flat 23's tenants. They seemed reluctant to step back. The paramedics did their best to gently persuade them, but in the end it was Norman's handgun brandished assertively in the air that ultimately convinced them what a good idea it would be to make room. There were a few shrieks from a rather inconsolable older woman. George left her to the paramedics to comfort and most likely sedate. This was the way of such things, desperate measures for desperate times. George followed Norman into the flat, closing the door in the face of the swearing woman who had been tailing him like some mad banshee with Tourette's. He got a little satisfaction out of that, but it seemed wildly inappropriate, inappropriate to admit it, even to himself. George steadied himself, leaning against the wall for a short, precious moment. His breathing was slowing. He could hear the air more clearly as it pumped through the tank into his mask. Norman was beside him, patting him on the shoulder to ask if he were okay. He wasn't okay. He couldn't be okay. Because this was where it got messy. This was the bit he had hated about most about all 12 previous calls. They called it risk management. He didn't know if that was the correct title or not, but what did it matter in a situation like this anyway? These words, these terms dreamed up by bureaucrats in think tanks, protocol and viable, procedural, none of them bore any relevance to the real world. None of them meant anything here in this flat to these people. They offered no comfort to anyone within this awful crescendo to a brutal, anonymous, and necessary evil. They moved through the hallway of the small flat, finding a cheerful young woman. The television was turned up loud in another room. George could hear a lively debate about symptoms and signs of the flu. It was pretty much all people were talking about on the radio, the TV, the street. The television sounded old, tired, jaded. Its speakers were muffled, buzzing as if a fuse had blown somewhere. An overtired doctor was reciting government rhetoric, hardly sounding like he believed it himself. The studio audience were almost as vicious as the crowd outside. The woman didn't introduce herself, simply retreating through into another room on seeing the two cops. She didn't look scared of them or surprised to see them, but she wasn't going to shake their hands either. George didn't expect pleasantries. Cops were like angels of death now. Expected, even summoned, but never welcomed. Now, go. Buy it. Flew. Wayne Simmons. You will enjoy it. I guarantee it.